What's up, y'all? This is Henny. Listen, today I need to talk to you about 90 days with this new iPad Pro 2021. You know, the new M1 model. I gotta tell you the good, the indifferent, the bad, if there is any, as far as using this device as my daily driver. You all know my iPad is my life when it comes to content creation and doing everything music related these days for myself. So let's jump right in and let me tell you how it's been 90 days later with the new 2021 iPad Pro. Let's go. <laughs> First things first, we gotta talk size, right? This is the 2020 iPad Pro that I've had last year. Now my wife uses this as her daily driver. This is my new 12.9 2021. For the most part, most people will say, hey, it's, it's you know, pick your poison. Do you want something a little bigger with a little bigger screen? Or do you want something a little smaller that's a little bit more portable? For me, the difference is significant. And I truly wish that I would have stuck with my guns and have gone with the 11 inch this year as well as last year over this 12.9. I'll get into the screen and all the new functions of the screen in a little bit, but overall, I just like the form factor of an 11 inch size as far as an iPad. For me, I want to be able to carry it as many places as possible and make it not feel as much like I'm carrying a laptop. Specifically, when you have to carry it like this with the magic keyboard, for all intents and purposes, it's it feels just like a MacBook Pro in the hand. So for the most part, for me, having this 12.9 again, this size is okay, but I truly like the 11 inch, the weight, the size, the feel, the form factor. And so most likely going forward, I'll know that my preferred size is the 11 inch model. But everybody asks, what about that new XDR liquid retina screen? How much better is it for you than uh, last year's model? And I'll tell you, it's really, really good. You know, I mean, for everybody who's used it and seen it up close in person, if you have the ability to compare it versus last year's model, you'll see a drastic difference in the blacks and the whites, making sure that dynamic range is very strong on that screen. But day-to-day -day usage for me, I have not been able to be like, wow, this is just so much better than last year's model. It's amazing, it's very crispy, it's very bright. I love watching content on it. I love, you know, watching movies and shows and YouTube on it, even editing all the videos that you see using LumaFusion on this device. It's been really great to have that type of dynamic range. I just wish that it would have came in the 11 inch model as well. And I know we'll probably see that next year, but you know, that was the main reason I went 12.9 versus the 11, it was that screen. And honestly, day to day, you know, comparing the two, knowing that I have, you know, the 11 inch 2020 model in the house, I have the 2018 uh, 12.9 version in the house, and I have this 2021 in the house as well as a few other iPads here. I can tell you that it's, it's, it's not a game changer to me. Let's just be real about that. It's great, it's crispy, it's bright, but it's just not a game changer. And all the things that I was doing last year, editing video, doing music production, doing a lot of, um, you know, typing out notes and, uh, you know, emails and things of that nature, it hasn't been something that's been drastically blowing my mind as far as the screen quality. But once you compare it and put it side by side against another model, you can definitely see that difference. This is the new M1 iPad Pro. So we got to talk about these M1 speeds. How much better, how much faster, you know, has this been for me over the last three months? Now, I can tell you that, you know, when using programs like Beatmaker 3, when using programs like Cubasis 3, Procreate, of course, LumaFusion, you know, I'm not seeing as much stuttering. I'm able to add a lot more AUV3 plugins and, you know, the render times and the export times has been faster. Once again, has it been considerably faster? No. For a minute video, you know, I might get five seconds faster. For a 10 minute video, you know, I might get a minute or two faster uh, on the export. You know, to export sounds and uh, files on, you know, Beatmaker 3 and Cubasis, I've definitely been able to see a little bit of increase on export times as well as the number of plugins I can throw at this machine without it not even, you know, hiccuping at all. I have, I have yet to see it 
you know, stutter, crash, or anything like that as it relates to throwing more plugins on an app or, you know, making sure that it's, you know, keeping up with the processing speed. It's been handling everything like a beast. So if you're looking for something like this iPad Pro 2021 and, you know, you have an older model, maybe you have a 2017 model, 2018 model, you'll see a drastic difference. But for the 2020 model and beyond, um, it was just minimal. It was just minimal for me, but I can tell you for future proofing, this iPad will definitely not get sluggish for years, I believe. Um, and it's just that powerful. And knowing the fact that Apple only allocates five gigabytes of RAM per app for this device, and this device actually has up to 16 gigs right now. This one actually has 16 gigs of RAM in it. I don't have any issues with, uh, you know, any apps closing, refreshing, any of that. It just stays on and it's able to really handle, you know, multitasking in a really great way. Now, as far as the cameras and some of the new technology built in with some of the cameras like Center Stage, it's actually been really great to use. You know, when you have multiple people, you know, we talk to my parents a lot, we talk to my in-laws a lot, uh, family and friends. Uh, when we're using uh, an iPad Pro like this, it just works really good to be on FaceTime and being able to, you know, whether it's me and my wife and all the kids, and it just really stretches that screen out so that, you know, it can show so many more people in the screen as well as when they leave and it just zooms back in and just shows, you know, my face. I really like that feature. It's just a really unique feature and I like being able to have that flexibility knowing that you can really move around your space and it's still keeping you in the frame. Um, the only thing that I don't like, and it was also mentioned by Christopher Lolly on his channel, is the fact that, you know, you just don't have as much uh, the right angle, right? Like it's like if you're in a magic keyboard and you're using it and it's down here, it's definitely going to be aimed up at you. So, you know, uh, you got to either really figure out a way, put some books underneath it or put it on a stand to be able to have it a really good angle. Other than that, center stage is pretty awesome and I'm really looking forward to that coming to more devices this year. Now, one of the other huge features is now the fact that this port right here is not just USB Type-C, but it's also Thunderbolt. And so, um, you know, for the most part, you're gonna get even more read and write speeds and faster read and write speeds, right? Uh, how has that been 90 days later? I think it's been pretty good. I mean, I copy a lot of files to drives like this. This is a Samsung T5 drive. I can definitely see faster speeds writing and reading from these drives. So I think that's really, really good. I've hooked my Thunderbolt docks directly into my iPad Pro and uh, been able to hook up numerous peripherals and things like that, you know, whether it's cameras, um, SD cards, uh, more, you know, hard drives like that. My, of course, my MIDI keyboards. So I think it's really, you know, it's really awesome to have Thunderbolt as far as a port here. But for what I do mostly, the fact that I'm doing a lot of music, photo and video editing on this device, just having something as simple as a USB Type-C hub uh, really just still gets the job done for me because if I have, this is my one that I've been using for years. This is one by Pergo. It has two USB 3.0 uh, ports as well as a USB type C port, uh, SD card, micro SD card, and HDMI. And so the only things that I will usually hook up with on my iPad Pro is, you know, I'll hook up my MIDI keyboard and I'll hook that up to the device as well as I'll hook up something like this Audient ID4. This is the audio interface that I use all the time now. So, you know, I hook this up via USB Type-C. So I'll plug that in, I'll plug this in and, you know, I'll be able to have most of what I need to get done. Or I'll plug in an HDMI and send my whole iPad directly to my streaming system, which is what you're watching right now. I'm recording everything on Ecamm Live directly in 4K. What I'll do is I'll plug an HDMI cord directly in here to like a Cam Leak capture card. Then I'll have multiple scenes on Ecamm Live so I can go picture in picture, being able to do videos like this, go live or things like that. So that's basically how I'm using this Thunderbolt 4 port. And, you know, for the most part, it's doing exactly what I needed to do. Once again, it wasn't that much drastic than last year, just using regular USB type C. So that's pretty much how the Thunderbolt port has been working for me. So I know when most people saw the new iPad Pro, it was released 
with the new Magic Keyboard in the white colorway. I definitely saw myself getting that super duper dirty. I went with the black Magic Keyboard this year as well as last year. And you know, it's there's nothing to write home about. It's the same as last year. Um, it feels exactly the same. The keys feel exactly the same. It's the best keyboard accessory for your iPad Pro. And it really takes it up a notch. If you haven't tried an iPad Pro with the Magic Keyboard, I'm telling you, it takes it to a whole nother level. Now I have been using the beta version of iPad OS 15 on this device since it was released. And I'll be honest, it's been pretty stable since like, you know, the first couple of betas were kind of finicky, but it's been pretty stable. And I really like some of the new ways that I can use my iPad with this new iPad OS beta. I really love the new layout, being able to put the widgets anywhere on the screen. I have my iPad set up so that there isn't any other pages full of apps. Everything is in the app library. And so it's easy for me to, you know, just type in the app that I want. And then from there, I just use it. You know, whether it's um, using the new uh, LumaFusion 3.0 update, which has been doing very well, or, you know, something like Beatmaker 3. Everything just seems to work very easily. And I haven't had any issues. You know, I love being able to swipe up take my notes really fast. I write a lot of notes using the notes app. You know, all the little fixes and features with iPad OS 15 have been great to use so far, whether I'm editing photos, editing video, making music, creating, mixing music, iPad OS 15 is going to be a welcome feature and so something that a lot of people are going to really enjoy. So overall, 90 days later, who would I recommend this new iPad Pro 2021 M1 uh, iPad 2? You know, I think that a lot of people who have an iPad that's a few years old, um, they'll see a drastic, drastic change in speed, apps rendering, export times, and just overall improvements in speed and functionality. You'll see a great improvement if you have an older iPad. Now, if you have a 2020 iPad from last year, I think you can still hold off. If you're on the fence and thinking about, do I need to upgrade to this M1 iPad Pro? I would say no, you know? And if you're on the fence on which ones to get, the 12.9, versus the 11 inch model. It really still comes down to, do you want the bigger screen with the liquid XDR display, or do you want more portability? You know, and 90 days later, I would still go for portability over the bigger and uh, more crispier screen. And it's less expensive. So yeah, that's pretty much it. 90 days later, I am enjoying it. At the end of the day, I'm still using this iPad every single chance I can, and uh, it's still holding me down. So. You know, I, I can truly recommend this thing. It's awesome, it's fast, it's incredible. There's still some room for improvement, but overall, this thing is the beast of all beasts of any tablet around. And um, I'm thankful that I'm able to, you know, constantly upgrade and do what I need to do to get uh, my content out there to the world. So hopefully you guys got something out of that. And I hope you guys are still staying safe and being healthy out there. And uh, I will catch you in the next video. All right. Hit him out!